Okay, so in this lecture, we look at the roots of unity, and so this is also a means of you know exploiting some of the properties of complex numbers, which we have uh, you know, been talking about, and which we have already we have looked at some of these properties, and the roots of unity is a very instructive you know uh, problem to consider. Right? That's the content for this lecture. Okay, so we know that if you square minus 1 or if you square 1, you're going to get 1, right? So, uh, so the answer to the question of you know, what the, the square roots of unity are is very simple, right? So just minus 1 or plus 1, right? So suppose we ask, you know, for the, root, the cube roots of unity. So in other words, well, we ask for, you know, in general complex numbers, Right. So if you ask for only real numbers, which when you give you one, of course, so the answer is just one. There is only one such real number, and that is one. But if you allow for complex numbers, so in fact, there are three complex numbers, which when cubed will give you one. Right. So one way to see this is to recognize, you know, that you know the right hand side. So we are solving for this equation z cube is equal to one, but the right hand side can be written as you know, in this canonical form where there is a modulus of a complex number. So one itself is a complex number whose modulus is unity and whose phase is zero, right? Phase or argument. So, but we have seen that the argument of any complex number is not unique, right? If it is zero, if zero is, uh, is an argument, then so is two pi, then so is four pi and so on. So in fact, you have this freedom to add as many uh, two pi's as you want. So if we write it in this form, z cube is equal to e to the i two k pi. Right. So the right hand side is where k can be zero plus or minus one plus or minus two so on. Right. So uh, it doesn't matter which value of k you choose on the right hand side, they'll give you all of them will give you just one. But when you take the cube root now of this quantity, so you get z is equal to e to the i two k pi by three. And now once again you have all these different values of k available but you know although there are not infinitely many different values now it's also not just one so in fact you have three different you know three distinct complex numbers which you know which appear on the right hand side now so in other words when you, there are these three distinct complex numbers which when cubed will give you unity right so it is in fact customary to to call these three, uh, you know, cube roots of unity in this manner. So to refer to one of them is one, of course, the other one is omega and the other one is omega squared, where omega is, you know, e to the i two pi by three. Omega squared, of course, is e to the i four pi by three, which is also, you know, which falls in, in, this, in this equation when you put k equal to two, right? So, so another way of, you know, arriving at the same result is to start with this original algebraic equation, z cube minus one is equal to zero and factorize it. So you have z cube minus one is the same as z minus one times z squared plus z plus one equal to, so the equation is z minus one times z squared plus z plus one is equal to zero. Now, which means that either z must be equal to one. So that is one root which is anyway the obvious root, which is the real root. So, or, you know, z squared plus z plus one equals zero. That's the quadratic equation, right? Which you can solve. And we know how to solve a quadratic equation. Its roots are given by simply minus one plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac, which in this case is one minus four, which is, which is actually square root of three times i. So you have minus one plus or minus square root three times i, the whole thing divided by two, right? So we, you know, some thought reveals that in fact, these are indeed the same as these omegas. Right? So these omegas, uh, this omega and omega squared. So in fact, omega is equal to e to the i two pi by three is equal to minus half plus square root three by two times i and omega squared is e to the i 4 pi by 3 which you know which has the same you know real part minus a half but the imaginary part is minus square root of 3 by 2 instead of plus square root of 3 by 2 so this is omega and this is omega squared 
So it's also straightforward to verify that in fact we have these the cube roots of unity satisfy this identity 1 plus omega plus omega squared equal to 0. Right? So not only are the roots of an equation of this kind, you know, if you solve for it, omega is a root, but omega squared is also a root. Right? So each of them separately, uh, you know, 1 plus omega plus omega squared is 0. And I mean, you can also put omega squared into this. So you, you get 1 plus omega squared plus omega to the 4 is 0, but that does not have any separate content. Right? So it's uh, omega power 4 is the same as omega. So that's why you get really the same, you know, identity. So the cube roots of unity satisfy this identity 1 plus omega plus omega squared equal to 0. Now, in fact, all we have done so far can be extended to the, you know, to can be generalized to the nth, cube, nth roots of unity, right? So, so this whole argument follows through. And so if we are looking for complex numbers z such that z to the power n is equal to 1, we would, you know, like before, write this equation as z to the n is equal to e to the i 2k pi, where k can be any integer, right? Because we have this freedom of, you know, adding your phase by an arbitrary multiple of 2 pi. And then we take the nth root. And so we have z equal to e to the i 2k pi by n. So now z itself has n distinct complex numbers, although changing k in this equation gave you no, you know, different value for the right hand side. They were all just one. But now the right hand side here for z, there are actually n distinct uh, complex numbers, right? Although, you know, k will take infinitely many values, but there are n distinct complex numbers which come out of here. Right, so these are the n distinct roots. So the nth, uh, the, the nth uh, root of unity, there are n complex numbers which are, you know, nth roots of unity. So, so again, it's customary to label them as one omega n, omega n squared, omega n cube, so on. Right, it's it's possible to verify that you know using this relation, indeed, they're all of this kind, where omega n is just e to the i. 2 pi by n instead of 2 pi by 3, you have e to the i 2 pi by n, right? And so it's also possible to visualize all of this geometrically. So in, in fact, the cube, cube roots or the fourth roots or the nth roots of unity in general, they all have modulus 1, but it's, it's only in the phase that they all differ. And in fact, they can be thought of as, you know, points which are sitting on a circle of, uh, radius unity centered around the origin of the you know complex plane and these points are all equidistant from each other starting from from the point of the real axis so we'll illustrate this for uh, you know the cube roots of unity so if you take the complex uh, plane and then take a draw a circle of radius unity so the first root is just this point on the x axis so it's just one and then you multiply so omega n is nothing but uh, you know taking this vector and and rotating it by angle of 2 pi by 3 and then to get omega squared you rotate once again by another angle of 2 pi by 3 and then if you do once more you return to where you, you started so you know changing k to any higher values doesn't give you any new complex numbers if you rotate around then you'll go back to omega so that's what i said omega omega squared omega cube is is just 1 and omega to the 4 is omega. So that's why we saw how 1 plus omega plus omega squared equal to 0 is the same identity you would get if you use the other root omega squared in that um, you know, algebraic equation earlier. So in general, if you are looking for the nth roots of unity, you're going to get n points on the circle, which are all distinct, right? You start with one and then there could be some point here, another point here, another point here, so on. They're all equidistant on this circle. So they all start with one because one is always a, a root, no matter you know uh, which root you're taking. So they all appear here. For example, if you if n equal to four, you're going to get you know one point here, another point here, a third one here, and the fourth one here. That's it. And then it keeps you know, repeating after that. So so in general, there are going to be n points equidistant on this circle. So this is a useful exercise 
because you know we are looking at the nth roots of the simplest possible number which is just a real number and also it's, a, it's just unity but in general you can find the nth roots of an arbitrary complex number and so the way to do that is to first of all write the complex number as you know r times e to the i theta so it has a magnitude and a phase so the magnitude is a positive number so the nth root of a positive real number is going to be another real number it's unique so you have something like r to the 1 over n which you can pull out and then you are left with just the, the problem of finding uh, the nth root of e to the i theta so in place of e to the i 0 like it is the case here you have e to the i theta right for an arbitrary complex number and then to theta you can add you know an arbitrary 2k pi and then of course so you're going to end up with some other you know sequence of numbers which is all, which are also going to lie on some some other circle whose radius is not not unity because it has some other magnitude but it's also going to these phases are going to uh, you know the different complex numbers will all lie on a circle which all get rotated by uh, you know a constant amount right so if we understand this problem well so in general we can solve for uh, nth roots of an arbitrary complex number so that's all for this lecture thank you